Welcome to Dave Rig Design. Most of my videos on the channel so far have been 3D printed related, but I also do quite a bit of laser work, so I thought I would show some and see if people are interested. I'm going to walk through my design process for creating curved walls by designing a pencil holder. We'll start by designing the mesh in Fusion 360, and then move the light burn to lay out the flat sections and create the curved body, then cut out the parts and assemble it. By the end you should understand the concepts to design your own file, also I'll show where you can get the files from the video. So keep watching, and if you like the content, please hit the like button so I know you want to see more of it. We're going to start by creating a new sketch, and then create a 100 millimeter square. Then with that done, we'll give each corner a 25 millimeter uh, radius. Now that we have the shape outline, we'll add a 3mm offset to account for the thickness of the wood. And then we'll add a construction line at 1.5mm to give us a center line of the thickness of the wood. So now we can measure the center line to give us our total length. The easiest way to do this is measure the one side and one curve, and then we can just uh, multiply by 4 to give us the total length. So we'll just save this number for later and continue modeling the rest of the mesh. To create the base, we just create another offset off the original shape. The size of this is up to you. I end up making it uh, 13 millimeters. With the initial sketch complete, we can extrude the walls to a height of 100 millimeters. To create the base, we extrude the same sketch down three millimeters for the thickness of the wood. With that done, we need to create some tabs to lock the walls onto the base piece. Now, uh, we could have made it the size of the whole flat area, but I didn't want to make it that big, so I'll create a construction line at the center to give us a uh, center point to drag out a 35 millimeter square. And then this is uh, repeated on all four sides. With the sketch for all the tabs created, we can select them and extrude them. Uh, I'm making them 2.8 millimeters. Uh, I want to make sure they're a little smaller than bigger than the thickness of the actual wood. To create the holes in the base for the tabs to fit into, it's the same process, but we don't have to draw out the squares. We can just project the original sketch onto the, onto the base and then extrude those to create the holes. The top plate and the tabs can all be done on the same sketch. We'll project the bottom onto it and the squares from the tabs and then be able to extrude um, both from it. Since we want the top plate to overhang the walls a little bit, we'll select the inner projection and uh, give it an offset. The last step is to create a ring that will sit at the top and bottom of the walls. This is to help support the curved sections. We can just do this by extruding the uh, existing sketch. And that's it for modeling. Um, we still need a top and bottom piece, but we can construct those in Lightroom from what we already have. So now it's just a matter of starting to export these pieces out to uh, DXF files. To create my DXF files, I use a plugin that lets you select any surface and then it'll generate a DXF file from that. You can download the plugin for free on the Autodesk App Store. I'll leave a link in the description. Now we can head over to Lightburn and start importing the files. The files will come in with the interior and exterior parts already on different layers. So it's just a matter of grouping it before you move it so nothing uh, gets out of sync. Now we can start constructing the curved section. First we'll start with a rectangle. This will be 366.5 millimeters long and 100 millimeters tall.
Next we'll start by marking out where the flat sections will be. These will be 50 millimeters wide and one will be in the center and then we will need two 25 millimeter rectangles at each end because this is where it's going to join back together and then we'll need to put two 50 millimeters in between those. Now that that's all marked out, we need to add the tabs. These are 35 millimeters and they need to be in the center of each one of these squares. To do this, I'll duplicate each one of the flat section squares and then realign it. And then it's just a matter of shrinking it down to 35 millimeters and extending it to uh, 2.8 millimeters on both sides. Now I can select all the squares and use the boolean feature to merge them all into one object. This will remove all the interior lines and leave you just the outline of the shape. Now I need some way of connecting the two ends together, so I'll create a dovetail joint. This will keep the two parts aligned while the glue sets. To create the joint I'll start with a rectangle and then draw two squares at the ends that will just be guides. This will show me where to add points on the main square. Then I can just delete the end corner points and it'll give me the same angle on both sides. Now I can just copy the shape and add it to the other end to have the matching hole to the key. Then use the boolean tool to merge everything together. Now to work on the curved section, I have a template with I've made a while ago that has different patterns to uh, create the bendable shapes. So I'm going to select the one millimeter pattern and start copying it over to the main shape. Uh, if you're interested in this uh, template, I'll have a link in the description where you can find it. But if you want to take the time to make your own, it's really not that difficult. Now I just have to copy and paste this to all the different curved areas and make sure it fills the section. I thought I was uh, ready to start cutting, but hit one small problem. I only have 12 by 12 pieces of plywood and that means this piece doesn't fit. So I'll have to take the curved section we just made and break it into two pieces. Let me know what you think so far in the comments below. Like, am I going too fast? Am I glossing over things that seem important? Uh, I just want to know so the next time I do this I can make it better. Now we're ready to start cutting. I forgot to record how I created the top and bottom pieces, but I just duplicated the existing ones and deleted the uh, s slots for the tabs. And here's what it looks like once you glue it all together. I cut out a second one though so I can show you how it gets assembled. There was a little too much play in the end joint for my liking. It'll work for this case, but I went back and refined the joint. The file now has a much closer tolerance. I'll start by gluing the two ends together with some CA glue. Uh, the trick here is to have a nice flat surface to hold it down to while the glue is drying and also not glue it to that surface. So this pattern not only lets the wood uh, bend, it also has an accordion effect. 
That makes it very forgiving when lining up the uh, tabs into the holes. Before gluing the other end, we'll do a little dry fit so you can see how it fits together. So because the tabs are just on the flat sections, there's no support to the curved areas. So that's what this ring is for. When it sits at the bottom at the top, it gives a backing to the um, rounded areas. So if you do apply any pressure on it, squishing it, it won't collapse inwards. Then the top and bottom plates just get glued on to hide where the tabs are and to add some thickness. So before I glue it up, I'm going to add a coat of stain to it. This stain's pretty thick, it's more of a paint, but uh, we'll see what it looks like. Now to glue up the other end, in order to get the joint to sit flat, I'm just going to clamp on a couple pieces of popsicle sticks. That'll hold it flat while the uh, glue dries. And here's the final assembled piece. I did find it might be a bit on the large side that if you only have a few pins, it, uh, they could fall over and kind of get lost. So I created this uh, divider that can be added in. So this design might be a bit bigger than most people need, so I went off and made a smaller version. All I did is shorten the uh, flat sides, everything else is the same. And I was able to make this tray by also modifying the file, just by lengthening the sides and shortening the walls. This can be a little EDC tray, keep your phone, your keys, whatever. Now this file was quite different, same principle, but a lot of things were changed. Uh, but we'll talk about this more in the future. I'll have the files for the two pen holders and the uh, square tray on my Patreon if it's something you're interested in making, or I'll also have them on my Etsy store. I'll have all the links in the description. If you made it this far, you're awesome. I really appreciate you watching all the way to the end. Drop a comment below and let me know what you thought of the build. 
and tell me if there's any uh, ideas you have you'd like to see me do next time. Hopefully I was able to show you that uh, designing products like this are not that difficult and uh, using a laser doesn't confine you to square edges everywhere. There's a lot of interesting things you can do if you just put your mind to it.